In this lesson, we're going to do some refactoring. This is cleaning up and making minor improvements to the code. After you add new features to the program, it's a good idea to look at the code you just wrote and see if there might be any ways to improve it. We're going to focus on the iNotifyPropertyChange code that we just wrote and see if there's any ways to improve that. We'll start by opening the solution and going to the Game Session class. If you go to the current location property, inside the current location set, we have all these calls to on property changed. And right now we're passing in the name of the property as a string. This works, but we could have a problem if we ever rename the property. For example, I'll right click on this and say rename, change the name to current location two, and that changes it everywhere in the program, except it doesn't change it here inside our call to on property changed. That's because this is a string. It's not really connected to the property name. I'll rename this back. And then we'll go down to line 25. And we're going to replace the string current location with a call to a function called name of, all lowercase. And then we'll put current location inside its parameter and notice it's not a string. So now this is actually using the name of the current location property. So these are connected. If we go to rename current location and change it to current location four, you'll see it changes it here in our on property changed. So if we ever rename a property, the on property changed function will get its new name and it will notify the UI that the property with its new name has been changed. This reduces the chances of us having errors because otherwise we have to just manually remember to update all these strings. I'll rename the current location property back to its original name without the four. And then I'm going to replace all of these on property change calls with name of. I'll just paste that in. And now our game session class is a little bit safer. Next, we need to go into the player class and do the same thing with all of our on property change notifications for the name property, the character class, the hit points, and all the other properties. So I'll make those changes now. And now we've changed all these properties, so they'll be safe if we ever rename them in the future. Next, you might have noticed that we have the same code in the player class and the game session class to handle the property changed event. This public event property changed and then our protected on property changed function. It's here in player and it's here in the game session class. Having duplicated code is usually not a good idea. If we ever needed to make a change to this on property changed function, we would need to remember to make the change in every class that has it. It's much better to have this code in one place and then have all the other classes use that same single place. That way, if we have to make a change, we change it to one place and everything automatically uses a new code. One way to share common code is to create a base class. Your other classes inherit from the base class and they can use the code in the base class. That's what we'll do in this lesson. We'll start by creating the base class, which will be in the engine project. So I'll right click, add new item. We want a class and I'm going to call this base notification class. It doesn't need to be named this, but that's just the name I'm choosing. I'll make it a, I'll make it a public class. And I'm going to say that it implements the I notify property changed interface. So I need to add a using reference to using system dot component model. And then I'll go into the game session class and I'll copy the public event and our on property changed method and put that inside the base notification class. 
So now this class implements the I notify property changed. Then we're going to have the player class and the game session class inherit from base notification class. So if we look at this diagram, our base notification class will have the property changed event and the on property change function. Player and game session will inherit from it. So player will be able to use the base notification classes property changed event and on property changed and game session will also be able to use those because they're children of the base class. So we'll go into game session and to make it inherit from the base notification class what we'll do is scroll back up to the top where we have public class game session and instead of saying it implements I notify property changed we're going to put in base notification class. So now we're saying the game session class inherits from base notification class. It's a child of base notification class. And because base notification class has the event and on property change functions, we don't need to have it in the game session class anymore. So if we scroll to the bottom, we see the green squiggly lines underneath the property changed and on property changed. If we hover over it, it says this is hiding the inherited member. So we can remove these. And now in our set where we do the on property change notification, this call is going to use the on property change code inside the base notification class. If we hover over it, you see there, it says it's using it from base notification class. And we'll do the same thing with the player class. I'll delete the property changed event and the on property changed function. Go up to the top and after public class player, I'll replace I notify property changed with base notification class. This player class still does implement the I notify property changed. It just does it through the base class. It's using the base classes property changed event and on property changed function. And because the base class implements the interface, then the child class automatically implements it too. When we create more models and view models, we're going to have them all inherit from the base notification class. So that way they can all use the common code to notify the UI of property changes. Inheritance is a very common technique in object-oriented programming, although there are some alternatives we will use in the future, but this is a good one to know. Most programs you work with will probably have some inheritance. That's going to be it for this lesson. There is some more refactoring we're going to do but it works with some completely different things, so I want to have that in a separate lesson. There'll be a link in the description of this video to the support page on my website. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment with the video, or you can go and leave a comment on the support page. And you can also go to the support page to get all the source code.